The Life and Sad Ending of Tony Braxton Blending fire and finesse, Tony Braxton has wielded a broad appeal throughout her career, studded with top 10 pop and R&B hip-hop hits, multi-platinum certifications, and major award recognition. Soulful enough for R&B audiences, yet smooth enough for adult contemporary playlists, sophisticated enough for adults but sultry enough for young listeners, and equally proficient at heartbroken and seductive material, Braxton made her solo debut at full power during the early 90s. Her first two albums, Tony Braxton and Secrets, both went platinum eight times over, accompanied by a string of hit singles including Unbreak My Heart, which ranks among the longest-running number one pop hits of rock era. Each one of her subsequent albums has been treated as an event, whether it has followed a brief or extended break in studio activity. They have regularly debuted within the top 10, highlighted by love, marriage, and divorce, and a set of duets with long-term collaborator Babyface that made her one of the few artists of the handed Grammy Awards each of three decades. From Love Should Have Brought You Home to her first single of the 2020s, Do It, Braxton's top 10 R&B hip-hop hits span a similar length of time. The latter appeared on her first album for Island, Spell My Name. Tony Michelle Braxton was born in Severn, Maryland on October 7, 1968. The daughter of a minister, she was raised mostly in a strict apostolic faith. Encouraged by her mother and operatically trained vocalist, Braxton and her four sisters began singing in churches as girls. Although gospel was the only music permitted in the household, the girls often watched Soul Train when their parents went shopping. Braxton's parents later converted to a different faith and eased their restrictions on secular music somewhat, allowing Braxton to leeway and develop her vocal style. Because of her husky voice, she often used male singers like Lurther Vandross, Stevie Wonder, and Michael McDonald as models, as well as Shaka Khan. Braxton had some success with the local talent show circuit, continuing to sing with her sisters, and after high school study, become a music teacher. However, she dropped out of college after she was discovered singing to herself at a gas station by a songwriter, Bill Petaway. With Petaway's help, Braxton and her sisters signed the Arista Records in 1990 as a group dubbed simply The Braxtons. The Braxtons released a single in 1990 called The Good Life, and while it was a hit, it caught the attention of L.A. Reid and Babyface, the red-hot songwriting production team who had just formed their own label, La Face. She became the first female artist to sign to La Face in 1991, and the following year, she was introduced to the listening public with a high-profile appearance on the soundtrack of Eddie Murphy's Boomerang. Not only did her solo cut Love Should Have Brought You Home become a substantial pop and R&B hit, but also duetted with Babyface himself on Give You My Heart. Anticipation for Braxton's first album ran high, and when her eponymous solo debut released in 1993, it was across the board smash, climbing to the number one on both pop and R&B charts. It spun off hit after hit, including three more than top ten singles in Another Sad Love Song, Breathe Again, and You Mean the World to Me plus a double-sided R&B hit, I Belong to You, How Many Ways. Tony Braxton's run of popularity lasted well into 1995. By that time, Braxton had scored Grammys for Best New Artist and Best Female R&B Vocal, and also tackled another win for the latter category of Breathe Again. To tide fans over till the next album was released, she contributed Let It Flow to the Whitney Houston-centered soundtrack of Waiting to Exhale in 1995. Again working heavily with L.A. Reid and Babyface, Braxton released her second album, Secrets, in the summer of 1996, and predictably, it was another enormous hit. The first single, You're Making Me High, was Braxton's most overtly sexual yet, and it became her biggest pop hit to date. However, its success was soon eclipsed by the following single, the Diane Warren pen ballad, Unbreak My Heart. The song was Inescapable Juggernaut, spending an amazing 11 weeks on the top 10 charts. Further singles, I Don't Want To, and How Could an Angel Break My Heart, wasn't quite as successful, but that didn't really matter. By then, Secrets was already her second straight multi-platinum hit. In 1997, she picked up a Grammy Award for Best Female Pop Vocalist and Best Female R&B Vocal. 
Toward the end of 1997, Braxton filed a lawsuit against LaFace Records attempting to gain release for the contract she felt that no longer fair or commiserate with her status. LaFace countersued, Braxton filed for bankruptcy in a move that shocked many fans but actually afforded her protection from further legal action. She spent most of her 1998 in legal limbo and passed the time by signing on to Portrait Bell in the Broadway production of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Braxton and LaFace finally reached a settlement in early 1999 and the singer began to work on her third record. The Heat was released in the spring of 2000 and it entered the Billboard 200 at number two, matching the highest position held by Secrets. The lead single, He Wasn't Man Enough, was a top 10 hit in the R&B hip hop chart topper. A brisk seller out of box, the heat eventually cooled off around 2 million mark and led to another Grammy win for Best Female Vocal. Following the release of the holiday album Snowflakes, Braxton appeared in the VH1 movie Played and recorded More Than a Woman. Released toward the end of 2002, with half of its songs co-written by Sister Tamar, it broke Braxton's streak of top 10 studio albums and prompted a temporary move to Black Ground Label. Libra supported with the singles Please and That's the Way Love Works started a streak of top 10 entries in 2005. In Europe, it was re-released the following year with the addition of Il Devo collaboration The Time of Our Lives, the official 2006 FIFA World Cup anthem. It was around this time that Braxton became the main performer of the Flamingo Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Her show, Tony Braxton Revealed, ran in April 2008 when she joined the cast of the competitive reality show Dancing with the Stars. After lasting five weeks before being voted off the show, Braxton completed Pulse, her first full-length for Atlantic. Issued in May 2010, it became her fifth top ten album. Braxton further boosted her 2010's comeback profile by participating in another reality TV series. The long-running Braxton Family Values, which focused on her relationship with her mother and four sisters. Meanwhile, she reunited with Babyface to record the duet's album Love, Marriage, and Divorce. Released by Motown in 2014, it went under four just before the duo starred in the Broadway production on After Midnight. Love, Marriage, and Divorce won the Grammy Award in the category of Best R&B Album just moments before the Unbreak My Heart and Memoir was published. The book detailed Braxton's triumphs as well as her business and health struggles behind the scenes and led to similarly titled biographical television film. Braxton's affiliation with Def Jam label began in 2015 in her second holiday recording, Braxton Family Christmas. Although lupus complications hampered Braxton's touring schedule, she worked on a new album in 2017 accepted by Soul Train Legend Award. Sex and Cigarettes, a dominated by Achillean Ballads, arrived in 2018. It reached 22 and led to the Grammy nomination for Best R&B Album, while Long As I Live, the top 20 R&B hip-hop single, was Best R&B Song and Best R&B Performance. The top 10 R&B and hip-hop song Do It, featuring Missy Elliott, followed in 2020 and the first result of a new deal with Island Records. Spell My Name, on which she was also joined by H.E.R., arrived in August. She had a 23% blockage in her micro-arteries. At first, doctors thought Tony Braxton needed a heart transplant. Then, they said, as microvascular enigma, which means she will be on medication for the rest of her life.